Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new A7 mini PC from Geekcom. Now this is a super tiny Ryzen 9 powered mini PC and I gotta say Geekcom has really come a long way when it comes to their overall mini PC design. This year I attended CES and I was lucky enough to go by the Geekcom booth uh, to check out all of their upcoming mini PCs. The A7 was one that I definitely had my eye on given the form factor here. As you can see, it is super tiny, but we've got a Ryzen 9 CPU in here with RDNA 3 graphics. They've also upgraded the materials these are built out of because now we've got an aluminum shell with the A7 and personally I really do like the look of it. Super clean design and I really do like the direction they're going with these new mini PCs. Of course, there are other minis on the market with more I.O. than the new A7, but given the form factor they're working with here, I think we've got a really nice selection. And they've also really upgraded some accessories that come with this. So obviously in the box, we're going to get the A7, also get an HDMI cable. But with this, we get their brand new super slim 120 watt power supply, which is coming in much smaller than the other ones on the market right now. Really impressed to see this, and uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the smaller ones that I've seen coming in at 120 watts. Because up front, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the left-hand side, full-size SD card reader. Over on the right-hand side, not much going on, but we do have some ventilation to get some air in here. And of course, around back, we've got our power input. Full-size HDMI, this is HDMI 2.0, and right above that we've got a USB 4 port running at a 40 gig protocol, a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, another full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, they've also added one USB 2.0 port, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, and another full-size HDMI 2.0. All in all, we can actually do up to four displays out of this mini PC utilizing USB 4, USB-C, and both HDMI ports. And when it comes to the overall specs of the new Geekcom A7, they actually offer two different CPU variants, but the one we have here has the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS. This is based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 4 GHz, and a boost up to 5.2. Built-in Radeon 780M graphics. These are based on RDNA 3. We've got 12 compute units, and it'll boost up to 2800 MHz. It supports SODIMM DDR5 running in dual channel, up to 64 gigabytes at 5600 megatransfers per second, a single M.2 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and if you buy one of these fully configured, comes out of the box running Windows 11 Pro. I definitely wanted to give you a look at the internals, but I just can't get over how small this thing really is. Now getting in here is pretty simple. We do have four feet that need to be pulled off, then we can remove the four screws. Next up, we've got a heat transfer plate for that NVMe SSD. It does have a little thermal padding on it, so it will pull that heat right out of that SSD. And getting in a bit closer, you can see we are running dual channel DDR5. I've got 32 gigabytes here at 5600 megatransfers per second. Looks like they did use crucial RAM here. And when it comes to the M.2 SSD, this is a two terabyte model here. Okay, so I've been up and running for a little while. Got a bunch of stuff installed that we're gonna be testing out. But first things first, I wanted to show you what we're working with here. Again, we've got that Ryzen 7 7940HS, which is pretty crazy for this form factor, but it's doing a really good job. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. Now over on their website, they state that this runs at 45 watts. And I'd say 45 watts continuously, but we do have a boost on this APU. I've got Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, and as soon as I run a stress test here with CPU-Z, you'll see it jump up to around 64 watts, and then it slowly backs on down to 45. So if I let this run for about a minute, we'd be right there at a sustained 45 watts across the board with the 7940HS, but having that boost really does help out, especially with gaming, because we don't need to send that much power continuously like we are right now with this extreme stress test. And while gaming, this really does put down some great performance, but a lot of people are going to pick something like this up as their everyday PC. When it comes to document editing, photo editing, web browsing, email checking, and even 4K video playback, we've got more than enough power and we don't need to pull 45 watts all day. Personally, I just like looking at that to see what we can do while gaming. But, you know, under everyday normal use, even 4K video playback, which we have going on here, 4K, 60, HDR from YouTube, this is only pulling around 12 watts from the wall. I'm using a kilowatt meter right now. Throughout this video, we only had a couple drop frames and I am on Wi-Fi right now. 
Using Ethernet or letting this buffer just a bit before I hit play would definitely help out. The 7940HS, even up to 45 watts itself, is an amazing performer, especially for everyday normal tasks, i.e. web browsing, email checking, video playback, normal stuff people do on their PCs. You want to do some document editing with several windows open? Not a problem with this system. Loads up web pages really quickly, and again, I'm just using Wi-Fi. I do have a pretty stable connection here where I am. But yeah, I mean, in terms of a mini PC, this thing is really, really quick. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few benchmarks that I ran on this, and I just went with 3D Mart. First up, we've got Night Raid with a 27,806. Firestrike coming in with a 7,216. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a really impressive score of 3,335. So this is definitely getting up on the higher end side when you compare it to something like the 7840U, but keep in mind we've got that 7940HS, so it does pull a little more power when it's needed, and as we saw, we do have that boost up to around 64 watts. So it's definitely holding its own against other Ryzen-powered mini PCs and a much larger form factor, but now it's time to see how this thing handles real-world gaming. First up, we've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 1080p Low Settings FSR Set to Performance. You can see it is dipping under 60 FPS, and I kind of expected it for this game here on integrated graphics. But by the end of this, we actually had an average of 58 FPS, which is pretty impressive for this game. Another one I've been testing a lot on these iGPUs is Pal World. We do have to drop it down to 900p given the fact that it doesn't have native FSR built in. You can mod the game out and add it if you wanted to, but I'm kind of waiting for the official release of FSR for this. At 900p low, we can average 67 FPS, which in my opinion is still really playable for a game like this. I've noticed that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has done really good on these iGPUs using the recommended settings. So going into the game, you could set this to Ultra if you wanted to, but I don't think this setup is going to handle it at Ultra. Using recommended 1080p FSR on, we got an average of 102 FPS with this game on this mini PC. I also wanted to throw one fighting game in, so I've got Mortal Kombat 1 at 900p low with FSR set to balance. Usually when I test this out, we do 1080 with FSR set to performance, but this time I kind of swapped it up a bit. Really steady 60 FPS every once in a while, you do notice it dip down to around 59. But in this case, you know, me playing this without that frame counter on, something I would never notice. And we're getting some great performance out of this little iGPU with fighting games. Forza Motorsports is one of those games that's given me issues on these iGPUs since it launched. Now it's definitely gotten a lot better since the initial launch, but it's not perfect. I believe they can get this game running a lot better and it's just going to take a little bit of time from the developers. Right now we're at 1080p auto medium settings with FSR set to performance. In the straights with not that many cars going, we're over 60 FPS, but on average 56. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1080p low FSR set to performance. This is really how you have to run it on these iGPUs if you want over 60 FPS. I will tell you that running this at about 45 FPS medium settings with FSR set to quality does work great on the 7940HS. And if you have a FreeSync monitor, you won't see any kind of screen tearing. It definitely feels a bit smoother on a display like that. But most people want to see this run over 60. And we got an average of 66 FPS on the A7, set up just like it is out of the box. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was total system power consumption from the new Geekcom A7. So while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and this information might come in handy to people in other parts of the world that pay a lot more for energy. At idle, this is pulling only 8 watts from the wall. 4K video playback jumps up to 12 watts. Average gaming, you'll see it go up to around 62 watts, so that's kind of a big jump, but we are pulling a lot more from it. And the maximum that I could get this to draw while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 73 watts. So obviously with that Ryzen 9 7840HS, this is a great performing mini PC given its form factor. Definitely one of the smallest Ryzen 9 powered mini PCs on the market right now, and I really do love their new design. It's very minimalistic, some people might want more of a gaming aesthetic to something like this, 
but I think it's super clean. It can basically sit on any desk. And as an overall bundle with the new slim 120 watt power supply, it's still a very, very small form factor unit. Really impressed by what they've done here with this new power supply. And given the fact that this does support 40 gig USB 4, you could always connect an eGPU and really up that GPU performance if you wanted. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Geekcom A7, I'll leave some links down below. You can head over to their website. I believe they're also offering this on Amazon. And if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this mini PC, just let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.